This video is for all of you who've been to the dentist and they've told you, you're not brushing good enough. You have another cavity. Well, guess what? There's a whole lot more to it than just that. Welcome back everybody. Today we are continuing our four part series on what causes cavities. This is part two and we are talking about genes and the environment. There are two different schools of thought regarding cavity formation. One is neglect and the more modern one, which is more correct, is susceptibility. Neglect was all about the fact that you were doing a horrible job taking care of your teeth. Essentially, you are the problem. With susceptibility, there's a whole lot more going on. Your genetics are at play, environmental influences, and much, much more. So with susceptibility, it's more that you have a problem rather than you are the problem. And this is what we believe today. With susceptibility in mind, you need to understand oral balance. And here you are with a teeter-totter on top of you. As we tilt to the right, we develop cavities. Things that influence these cavities are things like bad tooth genetics, developmental disturbances. Here's one example. This is a healthy tooth, but should you have had a bad fever when you were a child during that tooth's development, you can develop something called hypoplasia where the enamel is much weaker. An acidic mouth is also another factor that can cause decalcification leading to cavities. So we wanna fight this and go the other direction. How do we do this? Well, we add an alkaline diet and uh, excellent home care would be a good option. And also fluoride is very helpful in preventing cavities. Now I'm gonna show you just how different people's susceptibilities can be to developing cavities. In these demonstrations, when the wooden stick falls to the right into the cavity zone, that's when a cavity is developed. So here's your little brother who never gets cavities even though he doesn't do a thing for his teeth. Each candy that we put on him represents one risk factor. So not brushing your teeth, not flossing, eating too much candy. Well, you can see in the little brother's case, you know, literally the candy's falling out of his mouth before it ever causes a cavity. Toothless Joe, on the other hand, has a much more significant problem. Any single risk factor that he adds to his situation and he's already developing cavities. So if you remember back to our little diagram there about the teeter-totter, you'll remember that you were the fulcrum underneath. No two fulcrums are made the same and people are gonna go out of balance at different rates. So while genetics and environmental disturbances such as uh, fever during tooth development can cause an increased susceptibility to cavities, by knowing where you stand, you can add the necessary protective factors to make sure that you are back in balance and that you're not getting future cavities. And the next checkup will be cavity free, which will be awesome. If you like this video and you wanna see more like them, then please hit that subscribe button. It's really gonna help me out. I'm all about spreading health of the world from the top down. So if you wanna be part of the mission, then come along for the ride and we'll see you in the next video.